In this video, we're going to be tackling the Leak Code question longest consecutive sequence. And just the vibe, just the way that this one looks and sounds, you can tell it is going to get asked on an interview. But what exactly is a sequence? We have a very simple example here. And the easiest way to spot a sequence is just an incremental set of numbers. One, two, three, four. Obviously, there's going to be many ways to solve this. One way is we could create a nested for loop and we could check for sequences via every single possible combination. But unfortunately, this is going to be too slow and yield a quadratic time complexity. There's got to be another way. And if you think about it, when we are checking for every single possible consecutive number, what are we doing? We're checking for the existence of the number. And one way that we can check for the existence of numbers in an incredibly fast fashion and in constant runtime is going to be via a hash set. And what we're going to do is we're going to convert this whole entire slow array into an incredibly fast hash set. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to iterate through every single element in our array and I'm going to add it to the hash set. And this is going to allow us to search for things in record time instead of having to iterate over everything one by one like you would have to do in, in an array. Also keep in mind that a hash set doesn't keep things in order and we're not actually worried about the order in this case because what we're going to do next is we're just going to check for sequences. We no longer even need this array anymore. We have everything that we need. We've gotten our super fast hash set built but here comes the most important part, the million dollar question. How exactly are we going to identify a sequence? Well, we're going to have to iterate through every single element. So let's just go ahead, start off with an easy win. This red box is going to be our for loop, but we're not just going to identify any sequence. We're going to identify the start of a sequence. How exactly do we identify the start of a sequence? Well, Let's start off with our easy example, one, two, three, four. What is the start of the sequence? It's one. And we can identify the start because there's no other number before it. How are we going to find the number before it? We're simply going to take the number that we are at when we are going through our for loop and we are going to minus it by one. So 100 minus one is going to be 99. This could be very well the start of a sequence. Once we identify the start of a sequence, we're going to begin incrementing our number by one, one by one. We are going to check 101, 102, and we're going to check if they exist. 101 does not exist within this sequence. So we pretty much have a sequence of one. Now we move on to four. Four is not the start of a sequence because four minus one is equal to three and it exists within our hash set. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to move to 200. 200 minus one is equal to 199. This is the start of a sequence. Just like we did before, we will begin incrementing up one by one, checking 201, 202. Well, we check for 201, 201 does not exist. So it's pretty much only a sequence of one. Finally, we get to the good part. We'll take our one, we will minus it by one, which equals zero. Zero does not exist within our hash set, so we have correctly identified the start of a sequence. We will queue the incrementing process and add it one by one. So one plus one is equal to two. Then we'll do the same exact thing. Two plus one is equal to three. Three plus one is equal to four. As we do this incrementing, we will keep track of it and return it in the form of an integer as the longest consecutive sequence. And guess what? That's the algorithm. So let's go ahead, let's hop into IntelliJ and let's code it. First things first, we're going to create a new Java class and we are going to call this solution. 
Within the solution, we're going to create our method. This method is going to return an integer and the name is going to be longest consecutive. It's going to take in an integer array of nums. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to create an edge case. Just one edge case will suffice. We'll check if the length is zero and if the length is zero, the longest consecutive number obviously is going to be zero and that's what we'll return. We'll create our hash set. So integer is going to uh, be comprised of just numbers, integers, and we're going to call this unique numbers. You could call this just set if you want to, you can name it whatever you want to, but I think unique numbers is pretty explicit and tells you exactly what it is. We're going to add all of the numbers from our array to the hash set with just a simple for loop. Next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to create a piece of state. Basically just a very simple variable that's going to keep track of the max length of the sequence. Finally, we can move on to the most important part. This is where the meat of our algorithm is going to be contained. And just like on the whiteboard, we need to check if this is the start of a sequence. And we check if it's the start of a sequence by minusing one to check if there's a number before it. And if there's no number before it, it is indeed the start of a sequence. If we've reached this piece of code, we've now identified a sequence. And what we're going to do is we're going to keep track of the current length of the sequence with another piece of state and compare it to our max length of sequence down the line. But we can't stop there. Remember that if we're going to identify the sequence, we're going to have to iterate up. And before we iterate up, we need to do one more thing. We need to check if it's actually contained because we don't want to increment if it's not in there. And if it is in there, what we're going to do is we're going to say num plus one, and we're also going to increment the current length of our sequence. And finally, once we've identified that there are no numbers left in the sequence, what we're going to do is we're going to compare the max length of the sequence with the current length of the sequence. And lastly, we're going to return it at the end of the function. So let's go ahead, let's grab all this code right here, let's toss it into leak code, and let's see what we get. So let me go ahead get out of full screen mode here very quickly and drag this screen over toss this code within the code editor as always move this one over let's go ahead run our test thank god and hit the submit button let's see our time complexity we're looking good here time complexity n and our memory complexity and as well congratulations we have passed the interview hope that you guys enjoyed this if you did smash that like button smash that subscribe button as always thank you for watching